Normally on our channel, we spend a lot of time talking to you about what you should do. But today, come here for a second. We're gonna tell you the top 10 things that a professional dog trainer would never do. We all want our dogs to have other dog friends and it's fun to watch our dogs play with other dogs. Letting your dogs greet other dogs randomly on the street could set you up for a bad situation. The last thing we wanna do is have you let your dog say hello to the wrong dog and end up with a situation where your dog learns to be defensive about other dogs on the street. So I might run into someone with another dog. I might say hello and how are you? It's nice to see you, but I'm not gonna let my dog do the same. And when I'm ready, I'm gonna make sure my dog on a loose lead can carry on the walk with me. Let's go loose. That a girly. I completely understand. It is fun when you're out there driving to see somebody with a dog with their head stuck out the window. But I am going to tell you it is an extremely dangerous proposition. Making sure that your dog is safely restrained, whether it's in a crate or with a safety restraining device like a seatbelt, is going to ensure, okay buddy, up you go is going to ensure that they get to their destination safely right along with you. And every professional dog trainer will tell you that that is great advice. Dogs are scavengers by nature, which means that it's natural for them to wander around and get into mischief and try to tear apart things. So as they are learning that that's not an appropriate thing for the human world and the house in a human world, we wanna make sure that we're using good management to help them not get into mischief. Things like house lines will make sure that in the house, you can still take control of your puppy or your young dog anytime you need to. Crates will keep them safe in your absence. We use our crates for our meal feeding. We use our crates to keep our puppies contained when we can't watch them so that they don't get into mischief. And we also use our crates to teach confident independence with our puppies. Baby gates will help to ensure that you can set up a smaller space when you're giving your puppy more freedom. You might be out and about with them and wanting to hang out and do some snuggling, but you don't necessarily wanna to have to chase them all over the house. So keeping baby gates in place to contain them in the space with you will make it much easier for you to tell them that they're right versus having to chase them around the house and stop them from getting into all sorts of mischief and telling them that they're wrong. Every good dog trainer knows that good management is the key to success in your training. Dog parks sound like Disney for most new dog owners, but the truth is they are potentially very dangerous places with all sorts of inherent risks for your dog. And I understand that some of you don't have much of an option and you'll need to use a dog park. So there's a couple of ways to make sure you're doing that safely. Going at off times when there's not gonna be a lot of dogs that you don't necessarily know there, and maybe sticking to a specific group of dogs that you do know play very well with your dogs. But definitely it will be well advised to steer clear of dog parks if you can. And most professional dog trainers are going to give you that exact advice. Does your floor look like this? It probably does because a lot of times new puppy owners go to the store and they buy everything that they think will look interesting to their dogs. And I'm here to tell you, you really only need a couple of good toys. You'll need something that you feel safe leaving alone with your dog to chew. And you'll need something that you can use as an interactive tug toy. So something that my dog's not going to tear apart easily that we can play with and interact with. That means that when you bring out these toys, you become valuable because you bring the fun things. I never wanna leave toys laying around on the floor for my dog to come and go and play with at their will. That will make them lose value for your dog. So very, very important that you bring those good toys and when you're done playing, they go away where your dog can't reach them. You wanna get toys that help to build your relationship and build your interaction with your dogs. All of these toys are available at McCannDogs.store and they are purpose-built to do just that for you and your dog. I get that it's really convenient for dog owners to just put food down on the ground and leave it there for their dogs. But this act of free feeding is yet another thing that professional dog trainers would never do. There's a couple of really good reasons not to free feed. One of them is that you don't control how much your dog eats, which means that you won't necessarily know when they're eating and when they're not. It makes it really hard to realize if something's up, if they've got an upset tummy or they've got a health issue happening, we wanna be sure that we see that right away. And one of the first signs of that is when they don't wanna eat their food. It'll also create a very picky eater. If they can come and go and graze as they want to, food becomes very uh, lacking in value. And that means that it takes that opportunity for us to use it as value with our training. 
it might seem like a good idea, especially on cold winter days, to just open the backyard door and let your dog or your young dog or your puppy go outside and go to the washroom and entertain themselves out there. But I'm going to tell you that that is something that we dog trainers will absolutely avoid. The reason for that is that it's far too easy for your dogs to get into mischief out there. And the things that they rehearse are the things that are going to become habits. So if they go out in the yard and you're not there to stop them from digging or stop them from barking at the neighbor's dog, those things will become bigger problems down the road. For the first little while in your dog's life, until they understand the rules of the yard and they can go out there and be good canine citizens in your neighborhood, you are going to go with your dog and make sure that you have them on a leash or a long line so that you can take control when you need to. And the leash or long line in this situation is not meant to be held and used as a leash. It's just meant to be used as a bit of a, an, a safety breaker, an anchor, if you will. If my dog starts to get into mischief, I can easily and calmly walk up, step on the line, and regain control without them learning to do catch me if you can laps around the yard with me in hot pursuit. When you think about something like this, a retractable leash, it seems like it's gonna give you an opportunity to give your dogs more freedom. And that is true to an extent most dog trainers are going to tell you to avoid this tool as a rule with young dogs in training or dogs that really don't have reliable voice cues yet. If I can control my dog with my voice and if I can be in a wide open space where my dog's not going to end up getting tangled around things or you know potentially tying up another person that might create a burn, I might decide to use a retractable leash, but for traditional walks, the safer bet is going with a standard six foot leash so that you can be effective with your training with your dog. And you can also make sure that you keep them safe and don't lose control with that excessive amount of line. At some point, there became a trend towards bringing home two puppies, even litter mates at the same time. And I'm here to tell you that that is one thing that dog trainers would never do. And that's simply because we know how much work is involved. I think that the myth is that people think they're going to be able to bring home two puppies and those two puppies will raise each other and take care of each other and keep each other company when you're away at work and unfortunately nothing could be further from the truth. What we want to do with with our puppies and what we want you guys to do with your puppies is make sure that you are raising them to be well-rounded confident adults and that means that if you bring home two puppies at the same time you're going to have twice the work and really you'll need to keep those puppies separated the overwhelming majority of the time so that they can and become confident and individualized and you can work through any training issues with the individual puppy versus having the two of them together and trying to work out the chaos that will ensue. Dog trainers, we have multiple dogs, but we make sure that our puppies are raised individually and they get to a certain age and a certain level of obedience. I want to make sure that before I bring another young dog into my house, my older dog or my youngest dog in the home has already learned how to listen well, they can respond to my commands, they're well crate trained, they understand the rules of the house, and now I can move on to a new puppy to dedicate my time. Do you have kids in your life? This next thought is for you. A lot of times people think about the Disney model for dogs and they see dogs and kids romping together right off the bat and having a great old time. And unfortunately, that's just not reality. Puppies like to bite and chase and nip and kids like to run and scream. And they tend to end up bringing out those naughty behaviors in our puppies. It's so important that a capable adult is there to supervise and make sure that your puppy doesn't get into any mischief with the kids, but also to make sure that the kids are good with the puppy. Kids can grab tails and ears and pull things. The last thing you want to do is have a situation where your puppy becomes put off or frightened by your child, or even worse, turns around and ends up nipping or biting them. So good supervision is an absolute must. Every single dog trainer will let you know that. These may be new problems that you've heard about today, but these are actually conversations that we have a lot in our online training programs. We take deep dives into topics like this all the time, and we offer personalized support for you and your dog. So if you are looking for some guidance with your dog training and support from the McCann Dogs team, come and join myself and the rest of the instructors in one of our online training programs. You'll find the links in the description below. Today we talked about things that dog trainers would never do and we know that because they're common mistakes that people make. If you'd like to learn about the most common mistake that new puppy owners make, click this video right here. And on that note, I'm Instructor Shannon. Happy training!